Well, hey guys, welcome back to Race Create Cards. I'm so glad that you are here. Um, so real quick before we get into today's technique, and I hope you're really gonna like it and enjoy it. I've been playing with it hard and heavy. Um, just wanted to let you know whether you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin currently or not, the August kit, oops, already got something on there, um, is going to be called Sweet Sunflowers. Okay, most of us, I think, really enjoy the sunflowers. This kit's going to be a little bit different. Most kits come with one stamping spot. This next month, for the month of August, and you've got to sign up by the 10th of August if you want to get this kit. It has two stamping spots and a free gift in there so that you can keep creating cards. So. Um, I'm excited about it. I've actually got more than one coming. And uh, this one is going to create nine cards, three of three designs, and you will get those beautiful coordinating envelopes. Um, I happen to know it is $23.50, I think, for a monthly subscription. And guys, I've looked around out there at other companies that offer card kits and things, and uh, they're, they're expensive. I have not found anybody who is as reasonable as stamping up um, on their paper pumpkin kits and all that they give you. It is definitely a good value. About the only thing I can think of that you would even need to add to the kit might be a pair of snips. They supply the adhesive you need, any dimensionals that you need, any ribbon, any bling, any anything that you need to finish off your product, okay? Your card bases and envelopes are all color coordinated. Your card bases are already pre-scored for you. Um, and, and they're always such a hit. So if you're not sure about whether or not you want to really get into card making and all the supplies that go with that, this would be a very economical way for you to um, get into card making and try it and see if it's for you. Now, they don't always feature cards in the paper pumpkin. Sometimes it is uh, a, maybe you would be making treat bags or something for Christmas, but um, it's always a delight. Once you subscribe, all you have to do to create an account is an email and a password and that's it. You log in. If you don't feel like that next month's paper pumpkin is for you, because we all have different tastes, right? You can easily log in and click um, either unsubscribe if you don't want to do it anymore or suspend. And that next month, they will not bill you and they will not send you a kit. And it's very easy. Just head over to paperpumpkin.com, kind of read about it, check it out, see what you think. And if you would, please, I would love to be the demonstrator that you choose to get your paper pumpkin through, okay? All right, enough of that. I always hate to feel like a salesman. So, in my last video, we did this card. And I was telling you toward the end of the video, there was a couple of things that I wanted to do. One of them was adding this bow. And the other thing, well... I signed off without us even completing it. And so, I thought the champagne rhinestones would go so well on this card with this gold. I just felt like the tones were so pretty. And so, let's just go ahead and put a little bit of bling on this card to finish it off. I don't know. There's, there's kind of a big one. Can you kind of tell? I think it goes really well with that card. I think it's very pretty, um, and it just goes to show, you know, if all you had was white pearls, white pearls would absolutely work as well, and we're going to put one more on there. Let's see. That was a little one. Let's get a medium one, and I flipped it. Where did I flip it to? Oh, there he is. Get back here, and we're going to stick one right about there. Now the card is done. <laughs> and I'm really surprised nobody called me out on that because um, you guys are so sharp and you don't miss a beat. Oops. 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 I don't want to lose that one. All right. Stick him back on there for a future use. 
and we will put this out of the way and get started with today's technique. So, this is not, I'm going to say it's not a real old technique, but honestly, I can't say that because I don't know 100% for sure. I do know it is called cut, no, stack, cut, and shuffle. And when I ran across this the other day, I thought, oh my heavens, this is the perfect um, mass producible um, technique you could ever learn. And so I'm excited, if you're not aware of what that is, to show that to you today. All right, so basically you're going to find four patterns of DSP. Yep, we are finishing it up today with uh, uh, the fourth and final week of Christmas in July. And uh, let me get my paper pack. because honestly, I forgot what it was called. It's called Painted Christmas. We had it last year and they brought it back this year. It is in the mini catalog and I'm so glad they brought it back because it's just beautiful. Now, um, I did watch a couple of videos on this. Um, Lisa Freeman recently did it and uh, then I found one by Rick Adkins. He had done it last Christmas with the whimsical um, Christmas set. I, and I can't remember now what the name of that DSP was, but that's what he used. And if y'all want to, to go over and check out theirs, you certainly can. Um, our DSP is double-sided. Okay, so can you see one of the patterns is actually that one flipped over. Okay, and they coordinate really well, but I really I just wasn't liking this one for this technique. So these are the four I've picked. You cut them at four by five and a quarter. And whether it is six by six Christmas paper you have or 12 by 12, this works and it works well. And you can whip out four cards in no time, okay? And I already have my four white, uh, thick basic white um, card bases and they're the eight and a half by four and a half eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. I'll get it out right here in a minute. All right, let me get my trimmer. And I'm going to show you what the process is because while it is really, really easy um, and it's a wonder to behold, um, I want to make sure that you're seeing every step of this and that I'm explaining and putting in all the little tips and tricks that you need to know. All right, so we have it at four, four inches across the top by five and a quarter. You're gonna take the four inch side, and you're gonna put it in your trimmer. Now, I'm, I'm putting all of mine together. You don't have to, you can split yours up. Just remember, don't get your layers out of order, okay? So we're gonna go to two and three quarters and I'm trying to make sure I keep my paper straight here. Two and three quarters with the four inch across the top. And we're gonna cut this and I hope my blade holds up because I've been using this hard and heavy. Uh, as a matter of fact, I used the same technique yesterday and I did 28 cards for the card ministry. I've got 28 more to go, not with this technique. And, um, and, and I did not use Christmas paper, but, all right, so you're gonna temporarily lay the skinny rectangle over to the side. We're gonna use that. In fact, all of this is gonna get used. Okay, now we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it back to the five and a quarter inch side, put that up at the top, and we're gonna go to three inches and we're gonna cut that. Okay. All right, and also something I should have mentioned beforehand, pay attention if your um, DSP has got a direction and up and down or whatever, turn it accordingly so that as you're cutting this, um, mine actually, none of these really have a certain direction that they go in. So that worked out well. All right, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna lay it 
I need to get this where you can see what's going on. I'm going to lay it right here. And this was the part that we just cut off. It's going to lay right under there. Okay. Now we're going to go back to our rectangles. And again, we're going to take the long side, the five and a quarter inch side. We're going to put it in here and we're only going to go to two inches. Let me move this down a little bit so you can see. We're going to go two inches and cut that. There we go. Now, I hope you can see what I'm doing here is laying them out just like that. I won't need this because I went ahead and prepped all the other card layers and all that kind of thing. So, let me move this over where you can really see what is going on, okay? And I didn't measure to see what these actually came out to, okay? Now, we've stacked it, we've cut it, and now we shuffle it. Do not start with that first piece. We're going to go counterclockwise, but we're going to start on the right-hand side. You're going to pick up your stack and flip one to the back. Just one. Then we're going to go still in a counterclockwise direction, and we're going to go one, and if I can get a hold of it, two. Okay? And then we're going to this one, and we're going to go one, two, three. And that's it. Now you have your basis for whipping out four cards. How easy is that? So I'm going to take this card base here. And at this point, let's move, let's move some of this back over. I want all of this in the camera as we are doing this, okay? And I'm just going to... Kind of open up. No, I'm not. Let me get my bone folder and just try to make sure that that's down really well on both sides. Okay. But on, honestly, it is so simple, so easy to do. Now, at this point, you have a choice. When you start gluing your pieces onto your card base, you can definitely butt them together if you want to. I didn't have an issue. Of course, I made a video. <laughs> you know how that goes. I didn't have an issue with putting um, little spaces in between all of mine. And uh, I have a feeling you won't either. But here we go. So I'm going to take this one. And I'm just going to have a little over an eighth of an inch, I guess, right there. And I'm looking to make sure I'm straight up and down and straight across. So there we go. And again, going in a clockwise pattern here with our stacks. We're going to take this. Oh, this is a new glue bottle. Oh, my heavens. And I'm going to lay that about like so. And I'm looking to see if I'm straight across with the other piece and straight up and down the side. Let's see if I can get that up. I need that over just a hair. Just a hair. There we go. You see how easy it is to keep those margins in there if you want to. And then we're going to take this piece and lay it right there. Again, trying to make sure that we are lined up and that we're straight. There we go. And the thing about this design is actually a little forgiving. So, if you're not just like totally on the money, um, it's okay. It really is. It's okay. And then we're going to take this one. And I'm looking to see if I'm straight. If I've got my, there we go. So, there's that one. Okay, I'm going to lay it to the side and grab another one. You see how the patterns are constantly changing for you? because of that shuffle that we did. So, easy peasy. You can see how easy this is to get whipped out. And am I straight there? And you don't have to use this for Christmas. Oh my goodness. You can do thank you cards, birthday cards, guy cards, 
any kind of cards you want to with this technique. And I'm telling you why I'm loving it is because I have got some retired DSP. Shh, you didn't hear me say that. But I've got to find a way to get them used up. And I think this is an awesome technique to do just that. Okay, am I still in camera? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna wiggle that over, over, down a little bit. Okay, and as you can tell, mine are not just totally perfect. They're good, they're good. And we're gonna be adding a sentiment to the front. And honestly, guys, I'm gonna really enjoy getting to uh, dig out my, um, oh, I don't know, Shaded Summer and some of the other stamp sets and use on them before it's too late. And uh, th this did kind of grow on me a little bit, getting, you know, thinking about Christmas and trying to plan ahead. It did. I made a set of these yesterday, uh, day before, day before, I lied. And uh, I don't have any, any um, uh, sentiments or anything put on them yet, but at least I'm halfway there. And so by the time we get done today, I'll be well on my way to having some Christmas cards done. Okay. And I'm already starting to get a little bit sticky with the Tombow. So, how's everybody doing? I hope everybody has been having uh, some uh, good blessings in their lives. Been having a good week. Um, it's been good here. We actually got quite a bit of rain yesterday. And I was so thankful, so grateful. I got up this morning and once again, I've, and I've never really seen it happen, but... Uh, this morning it, it was gray and it was overcast even though the rain wasn't in the forecast and i thought well maybe we're going to get some more but no um there was a fine fine mist of rain like it was so fine you couldn't even hear it and uh um it reminded me oddly enough of a really fine delicate snow you know when it just kind of comes down and it's not even enough to be a whisper and it's done that here two or three times and it's it's different yeah very different looks like I'm gonna have to de-glue my fingers here in a minute because it's not helping me get this stuff on here all right, do you see how in just a couple of minutes we have cut our DSP and we've just about got it all glued to the front of the card. Now, could you, if you wanted to, cut a layer and put under it? You could, but honestly, why? Uh, save your card stock um, because your DSP is doing all the work for you. You've already invested in it go ahead and realize it to its full potential. But I am loving this technique. And I don't know if it's new to you or if you've seen it before, have no idea. Now I'm gonna take just a second, and try to get the worst of that off of my fingers. Yeah, I used to, uh, I used to use the phrase Messy Marvin a lot, and I don't do that anymore, but it still comes to mind. But uh, I had a brother-in-law. He was a wonderful, wonderful man. You couldn't have asked for a better husband and a father to his two sons. And uh, his name was Marvin, and we lost him here a while back. So, yeah, I try not to say I'm a starving Marvin or a Messy Marvin anymore. All right, guys, look here. Look at all those diff. Every one is different. How quick did that come together? Isn't that awesome? I'm loving it. I hope you do too. All right, I'm just taking one at random. And what I did is I went into 
my Marius Moment stamp set that carried over this year. And I decided I wanted to use a joyful Christmas to you and yours for the sentiment, okay? And on the inside, thinking of you this festive season. And I have already stamped a joyful Christmas. If I can find, oh, here we go. So the dies I used were the stylus shape dies. And let me very carefully open this, just carefully, because the two dies I used, I didn't uh, stick them back on here yet, but I used the second largest and the third largest circle. You make your card, you use whatever you have to make it come together, okay? Um, but I've already got four of these circles pre-stamped. That one. That one. Okay, I've got three pre-stamped. <laughs> Somewhere I lost one. Maybe I ate it. I don't know. And in the largest, um, I cut out with um, shaded spruce the, uh, the circle that's going to make our background layer. However, before we glue them on, You'll know, you know, sometimes we have a hard time getting our sentiments to always totally like fill in our die cut, whatever that is. And uh, if that bothers you, honestly, I think this is just bright and cheerful and I'm good with it. But let me show you a trick that you can use uh, to, that's not shaded spruce, that's evening evergreen. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was using shaded spruce on my uh, card ministry cards. Sorry about that. So I've got Evening Evergreen here, and I have got two of the fern stamps, these two right here, mounted together on a block. And what I'm going to do, and I want a piece of scrap paper. Do I have a piece? I guess I'm gonna use the back of my paper pumpkin flyer. And y'all may have already kind of noticed this. If you take evening evergreen and you stamp it off a couple of times guess what color you end up with soft succulent which is one of the colors in this dsp pack so i'm going to take i'm going to stamp it once i'm going to stamp it twice and then i'm going to take the third generation and i'm just laying it over the whole circle just like that and that way there, you can kind of help fill in if you feel like a sentiment has got too much blank space around it. Um, and it's totally easy to do. So one, two, and three. There we go. And one more time. One, two, three. All right, so I guess we're only going to put together three of the cards because I'm not getting the dines out and the big boss out and all that kind of thing. I was kind of pre-prepping this um, for you today. Now, the red that I used was the real red. I used the real red stamping pad to stamp this. There is real red in that DSP. Now, at this point, we can take and put this on one of the circles. My flowers are doing so well, even though it is so hot and humid here this year. It's been really stuffy. Um, more humid than usual, I kind of feel like. Maybe it's not, but it just sure seems to be. And tomorrow is going to be my day to get out and play in the yard. Um, everything is pretty well caught up, however. Um, there, there are a few things that uh, I do need to give attention to. All right, I am going to pop this up on dimensionals. You do not have to. And you know, before I do that, let me show you a tip that I saw a very long time ago, and I always forget to pass it on. It doesn't matter what color Sharpie you have. I have had this blue one in my card room for forever and a day. 
you know how sometimes when if you're dealing with a lot of dimensionals and you're putting down several and you kind of have to go back and touch one to see if it still has a backing on it this is how you overcome that you simply take a sharpie and just run a line down through on top of the backings what that does is that will tell you when you have managed to remove all the backings and it's neat it's simple it's yeah i don't know why more of us don't do it i don't know why i don't do it obviously you can tell i had never marked mine but if you're ever watching somebody's video they're making cards and they have little lines on their dimensional backings that's why okay now see I can immediately see exactly where I have removed the backings and where I still need to go. And it doesn't soak through. It doesn't hurt the dimensional underneath or, or degrade how sticky they are in any way, shape, or form. All right. So, here we go, darling. And down. All right. There is that. Okay. Hang on just a second. Sorry about that, guys. I had somebody pounding on the back door. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Actually, it was my husband coming in from work, and I had him locked out. <laughs> All right. He's in. Safe and sound now. All right. Now, for the inside of the card, I did cut a layer of four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and we're going to go ahead and just lay that in there and get that glued on. We don't want to just lay it in there, do we? We want to get it glued on. There we go. Got that. Let's pop that in. Now, I did pre-make a card, and I will show it to you. Um, I put a bow on it. And I'm not going to put a bow on the rest of these because I thought, you know, if somebody is wanting to mass produce cards they and they have to stop and tie a bow for every one of them, that's not going to work very well, is it? Okay, so on the inside of the card, I want to put, thinking of you, this festive season. And before I glue it down, just in case I don't get it stamped straight, Let's put that on there. Hopefully it's straight, but if not, I can flip it over still, right? All right, there we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, close this up. And glue this in. And then we are gonna be done with the first card. All right, now at this point, you can decide whether or not you want to hang around and watch us finish two more. Um, totally up to you, but isn't that awesome? Look at that. How pretty. How pretty. And for the bling for this one, I took, and they are in the annual catalog, they are the Iridescent Pearl Basic Jewels. And I don't know uh, if I can show you that iridescent shine. And I took my dark real red stamping blends and I've already colored some, but I didn't color all of them. I have three more I need to color in order to finish. And I wanted to show you just how easy, if you've never done this or ever actually seen it done, because I know a lot of times we pre-do things and you're not actually able to see it get done. Uh, and it dries like within seconds, it dries. 
And if you're not happy with the darkness after it dries, you can go back and put another coat on it. You absolutely can. You can use any color of our stamping blends to try to make it fit your project. And if I can get a hold of it without it flipping away, and we're gonna add three of the large ones. I say large, there's only two sizes no, I take that back. There is three. There's a large, medium, and small. And I just went ahead and went with the large. Okay. And there we go. How festive is that? You don't need any ribbon. You don't need a bow. You can do that if you want to. But you don't need to. All right. Let's go ahead and start assembling what we need for the rest. But my flowers are actually doing really good. The zinnias are beautiful. They're a, they're a, they're not a purple. They're not a red. I guess they're like a really intense, maybe a fuchsia. Um, but they're really, really pretty. Um, the lavender is doing okay. The one thing I meant to plant this year, and I never got around to it, and it's too late now. Um, or at least it's too late to buy it locally. Um, I really wanted some Russian sage, really did. But that's okay, it's on my list for next year and we'll get that done. Okay, let me go ahead, let's stamp. Seeing that I shortchanged having enough circles We'll just go ahead and just do three of these. Okay, got that one. I need to do one more. I'm gonna move that. Your red dries pretty fast, but red being such a highly pigmented ink, it is wise to um, go ahead and give that a few extra seconds to dry before you start handling it. I mean, that's just a tip that I learned the hard way along the way, and hopefully you won't have to learn it the hard way along the way. All right, let's go ahead and get this put on its backing. Yeah, I've got a uh, painted Japanese fern on my back porch mixed in with another plant that I can't ever remember the name of. And it's doing really well. My uh, foxtail fern is doing really well. Um, but when I planted my front flower bed, I didn't realize that hookeras were a shade loving uh, perennial. So I've got one in my front flower bed um, that keeps getting burnt leaves on it and I couldn't figure out for the longest time why, because I knew it was getting enough water. Um, and then, so I did some research and, and realized, oh, <laughs> yeah, they don't like a, a lot of intense sun. So, and it looks like I really shortchanged myself on this piece of white. Hmm, that one didn't get cut down right. I'm gonna move that off of there. Let me see if this one was cut right. It wasn't, hang on. Well, I've got it at four by five and a quarter. So did I mess up on my green layer? Maybe that's what I did. That's what I did. My green layer wasn't right. What I may have done was put the correct layer back in my package of cardstock of Evening Evergreen and substituted a scrap piece. That yeah, sounds like something I would do. So yeah, I've got to get that hookera and get it in a little pot and get it put in the shade. I'm not sure exactly where. When we had those trees cut down in the front yard, um, uh, I lost all my shades, so I don't know. 
maybe I can fit it too out on the back porch, but uh, my other ferns and planters and things are pretty good size, I'm kind of running out of room. Even though we have, uh, we've been blessed with a fairly large back porch. Okay, put that to the side. Now, let's just pick a couple of more. And then when all is said and done, I'll show you all four designs side by side. One will be a little naked, but you'll be able to see those patterns and how neat that was. I hope you guys try this technique. I really hope you do. It was so much fun, and I was able to whip out those 28 cards yesterday with no problem. I mean, I just didn't have a problem, and uh, I got my sentiments done, and I got the inside of it, of the cards done, and then this morning, I just simply glued everything together and it, it was good it was real good so i only have 28 more to do i am doing the uh, easter cards and uh i'm really gonna have a hard time getting my mind wrapped around doing <laughs> easter cards um but yeah and it's not just me there are several other women uh in our card ministry that are also going to be making 56 cards each and uh we will have them all ready, not for next year, because we already have all the cards put together for next year, thanks to the women who um, were previously running the card ministry, and they're awesome talents, so um, these are actually the cards for 2024, so yeah, we're not like in a, in a race against time by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, when you have to um, plan ahead and kind of, you know, know what it is you're going to need, and what your monthly needs are going forward, uh, you sure don't want to wait around either because time can certainly get away from you very quickly. All right, we got one more of these to put on and we'll get this done. I don't even have these over here, do I? Well, you can see what I'm doing. Okay. But y'all give me some feedback now and let me know what you think of this technique. Had you heard of it? Had you not? Um, and what you think of it. But yeah, it's. I'm excited over this technique. I really am. Okay. I'm almost there. I've got three more to go. And there we go. All right. Now, the beauty of putting a circle, a square, however you want to finish yours off, if you didn't quite get everything lined up, not a worry because this is going to um, cover over any little mistakes you might have made, right? All right, let's get our bling on here. And then... We'll just bring them all back together and lay them side by side, naked one and all. Okay, we're almost there. Well, guys, I've been working on putting a blog together so that when I do these videos, I can make you project sheets that you would be able to print out. Not tutorials, but at least the project sheet that would have a photo of the um, of the finished product and all the uh, cutting dimensions and things so that you could print that out and have that handy. And I'm learning real quick that the site that I picked isn't all that and um, yeah, it, it, it was kind of frustrating. So I'm on the hunt again. And what's really sad is I had gone ahead and bought the domain um, RaiseCreateCards.com. Um, I had already bought that. And so I'm going to see if possibly I can transfer that over to maybe WordPress or 
or someone who's who's got that good reputation. And I am just getting pearls everywhere here. Got another one stuck. Oh my goodness. There we go. Yeah, I don't want to lose them. All right, let me put these back over here and move my junk junk out of the way. And let's bring these back in. Where you, is there another? I swear. <laughs> oh goodness. I guess I'm getting blinged up. All right. So let's see what you think, guys. Let me see if I can put these all in the same frame at the same time. Bring that one in a little bit. Okay, guys, what'd you think? We did, you know, this really didn't take long, even though it's a video and I'm having to stop and explain and tell you all this stuff. What do you think? Aren't those adorable? And it'll work with any DSP you have. And you can just whip out, you could whip out 10, 20 thank you cards to have on hand or 10 to 20 birthday cards to have on hand. Um, it's so, so easy to do. All right, guys, until next time, y'all be blessed. Know that you're loved and I'll talk to you later. Bye.